Call to order. Uh, call about that. The mayor and city council meeting for January 9th and ask Councilman Wentz to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All council members are present and accounted for. The mayor is out of town. He had a death in the family. First on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of December 6, 2017 and December 7, 11, I'm sorry, 2017 regular meeting. There a motion to approve one or both of those sets of minutes? I make a motion to approve both sets. I'll second. All in favor? I'd like to ask a question about the minutes on November 11th during discussion. Mm. Madam um, Pro Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> on the minutes from December 11th draft, uh, it's a single page minutes. Uh, it describes um, approval, the minutes, of the November 8th meeting and the November 13th meeting. Down under the uh, uh, ordinance 16, 2017, when just reading the minutes, you can't tell from reading these minutes what was being done by the council. The copy of this ordinance that was later approved is called regulated structures. So I'd like to make a motion under the approval before we approve the minutes to add the words regulated structures after the numbers. I don't think anyone at a later time would be able to understand. Hang on, it's, it's right there. Um, that ordinance uh, 16, 2017 would be uh, regulated structures. If you recall, I opposed this because it, chapter 94 had not been written at the time that we and tried to enact this section. <clears throat> and I know that in recent advice from the legal staff, uh, there was discussion about how we were waiting for the legislature to act on this. So I propose a motion that we add the title in the first paragraph, regulated structure, and then explain that um, we're waiting for the legislature to uh, enact title 94 like we were told in a recent meeting, and I make that a form of a motion. Councilman, under adoption, it says ordinance well, 16. I'm sorry. He made a motion with someone needs to well, second it if we want to discuss yeah. it. Oh, okay. So he's making a motion to I'll second to it for the sake of I'll second for the sake of discussion. Thank you, Mr. Joe. Councilman, under adoption of ordinance 16-2017, it says amendment to zoning code regulated structures. It's there. Yeah, I think it should be added in the first paragraph, and I also think that um, the discussions from recent meetings concerning adoption of chapter 94 <coughs> should be added too because we the council went forward and adopted a regulation that affects chapter 94 that had not been approved at the time so i want to mention chapter 94 there as my reason and its failure to be adopted as my reason for voting no any other discussion? Madam Chair, we need to vote okay. on his amendment first, and then we can carry the vote for the minutes as presented or all, as amended. All in favor of carrying forth as amended by Councilman Frazier signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Okay, it's back to the original. Correct, as presented. As presented, approval of the minutes for December 6th and December 11th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm opposed to enacting minutes that are not accurate, don't describe what happened at the meetings. Okay, next on the agenda, we have a proclamation for school choice week. 
This is suggested proclamation language commemorating the city of Tawny Town School Choice Week. Uh, you all have a copy in front of you. I, I suppose we are approving this language, correct, Henry? Yes. Are you really? Well, yeah. or is there's nothing? It says it. suggested. Yeah. This is just uh, a suggestion. If everybody's okay with, the mayor will then put it in the form of you know the resolution. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion that we approve the ordinance to declare uh, a week to recognize the. Uh, it's not an ordinance. It's a proclamation, I'm sorry. You are correct. So I'll make a motion we adopt this. Okay, does everybody out there have a copy of this? Do I have to read it? You can read it. Okay, whereas all children in the city of Tawny Town should have access to the highest quality education, and whereas the city of Tawny Town recognizes the important role that an effective education plays in preparing all students in the city of Tawny Town to be successful adults, and whereas quality education is critically important to the economic vitality of the city of Tawny Town, and whereas the city of Tawny Town is home to a multitude of excellent education options from which parents can choose for their children, and whereas educational variety not only helps to diversify our economy, but also enhances the vibrancy of our community. And whereas our area has many high quality teaching professionals who are committed to educating our children. And whereas School Choice Week is celebrated across the country by millions of students, parents, educators, schools and organizations to raise awareness of the need for effective educational options. Now, therefore, I, James L. McCarran, do hereby recognize January 21 through 27, 2018, as City of Tawny Town School Choice Week, and I call this observance to the attention of all of our citizens. <coughs> well done. Okay, I move that we adopt this. Okay, everybody's in agreement with uh, that language and that proclamation will be put forward. Thank you. Uh, Did we need to vote on that because we had? No. no. Okay. When we the mayor makes a proclamation, voting. there's no. no vote necessary. Okay. I was just curious because of the motion that was no. made. No. Next, we have councilman's state statement regarding conflicts of interest on agenda items. Does anybody have any conflict on anything on the agenda? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. Moving on, next we have resolutions, ordinances, and agreements. We're not introducing anything, are we? No, Madam Chair, okay. the, only, the only thing you're doing at this particular one here is uh, the approval okay, of the... Of the, the okay, for... And, up for and the resolution for <clears throat> the water, water allocation. Water allocation, yeah. Okay, um, up for approval is the fiscal year 2017 audit, which we were presented with last Wednesday. I move that we approve. I second. All in favor? Um, I'd like to discuss this before we vote on it. Uh, usually, normally, a motion is made and a second is made before a matter can be discussed before a body, and then there's time for discussion and then a call for the vote. So during that period of time of discussion, I'd like to bring up that two, um, two irregularities were pointed out by the excellent job made by the auditors that sat there on Wednesday, having to do with, uh, with payroll duplicate accounts. That's, and, no, that's not. Uh, dual was. signings on the final no, page. There are two recommendations there. And uh, I didn't see any discussion of the controversial visit of, of uh, the, um, the work that was done back in April where uh, we asked for an explanation of how much money was spent to bring the auditors um, Davenport in here just before the election to do electioneering on the water bill 
And so I expected they would have some mention of how much that cost in there. I didn't see that no. in the discussions. And I've been searching the document that was given to us on Wednesday before the, uh, the vote on Monday. I think to accept an audit report is different than approving an audit report. And because I don't, I'd like to have more information about those two irregularities in the audit. What, that are what irregularities are you talking about? The final page, and I don't have it before me, but the final page mentioned two, and I thought over the weekend that since that those two were brought up last year and some were resolved but some weren't resolved, that we've lost the city treasurer since then. Why, I was wondering, the city treasurer had resigned and why we have a new treasurer. Well, you need, to ask, you need to ask the previous treasurer with that. I don't have that answer. Yeah, so I was just wondering if... Uh, why the uh, Davenport irregularity was not mentioned in the audit as irregularity. It's not a, it was not found to be an irregularity. Well, it was the month before the election. They came in to say publicly, if you look at the video, <clears throat> that anybody that suggested a 50% reduction in the water bill was a liar. And I thought that was electioneering using town money. What does that have so, to do with the financial that, audit, though? That doesn't have anything to do with it. It's an irregularity to use town money to do campaigning. Well, if you recall the last statement that was made, I think Councilman Vigliotti asked the question, was there anything abnormal Correct. found in this, in this audit? Was there any money spent inappropriately? Was there any, did they find anything wrong? Anything missing. Anything, anything missing. Yeah, right. I recall anything. that. Yeah, and what was the answer? Do you recall the answer? Yeah, it omitted the, the issue I'm raising. <sighs> there is did not mention that. There isn't an issue. Is that the real issue? Well, the first I think one, that's a, the first one that the significant issue that was. Well, they're the. Are you an auditor? They're the ones that declare whether it's. No, I don't know whether you realize that I am a city councilman, though. I do recognize and, um, that. I should be Maybe. treated with a decorum of respect. So. Um, well, I'm respectfully, I will address the fact that what the two items are. The first item was the fact that um, on the first quarter of the year, it was not reviewed and signed by myself or the treasurer. That was simply because there was a change in of uh, organization at the time. They did not find that to be un, you know anything other than a mentionable thing. They said that also that that had been the first quarter. But it also said that from the third, second quarter on to the fourth, it was done. Okay. Now the third, the second issue has to do with allocation of um, money to the budget. Okay. Now last year we told them that we were going to uh, make the, the uh, timesheets uh, fit that, and we right. did. With the exception, it really is really difficult to find how to do the allocation and how to re reconcile uh, salaries. And so what we decided, and it's, it's there that well, we're <coughs> gonna keep track of that and uh, from um, uh, the, tr the treasurer is gonna be taken care of it. It's not gonna be on a timesheet, doesn't affect the payroll. So that's the solution. And that's what we've, we've offered to them and they've accepted that. Yeah, is the new treasurer here tonight? No. I have not <coughs> met the new treasurer. Um, you were, said that you were going to bring her here to meet the council, and um, she wasn't I, here during the audit report, which I thought was irregular, but not here tonight. Well, she had only been in, uh, on board less than a month at that time, so uh -huh. she really didn't have any uh, anything to offer. I guess. And I believe you mentioned that uh, she, she could not be here. Yes. <clears throat> not nor tonight. That's right. Obviously. Okay. And the other thing I want to ask real quick, because, you know, we're getting certain terminology confused. I would like to ask for clarity exactly what an irregularity is. So anybody who's oh. watching or in the audience is aware of what an irregularity is. Well, you know, unfortunately, that I don't have that, but it is right in the document itself. It defines what each right. one are. Each one is, rather. <clears throat> Oftentimes, um, an irregularity occurs when the auditor feels like, uh, when they look at a line item and they feel as though you did not apply generally acceptable accounting rules. Right. Yes, right. 
You know, and, and when it comes to these two things, they're extremely minor, and it, it, auditors must find something wrong. Yes. That's their job. <laughs> <laughs> I've never known them not to find at least exactly. one thing. That was one of the better audits we yes. had in the past several years in this city. Yeah. It, was, it identified a substantial 900 some thousand some odd dollars to the black, so there's, we're a healthy town. It did show us that financially. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor of approving the fiscal year 2017 audit, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I'm going to oppose that. I think that the Davenport irregularity was not mentioned, and that's an omission. Next is resolution 2018-1, the water allocation for January 2018. A motion to approve. So moved. Oh, sorry. All second. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Next, we have the city manager's report. There's a few things that I have tonight, and um, one of them is there seems to be a little bit of discussion as to whether about the certificate of liability. And here is a copy of the certificate of liability that was issued by you on 10-13-2015. Uh, so that hasn't changed. So that is the, and it says right at the bottom, BMX, PO, meat, and competition. You gave me two, Henry. You, huh. can, you can share that with someone else. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and next, what I have is some documentation that, that in my mind, proves that this was a, a fundraiser. On the first, you know, one, I'll give, give them out and then we'll talk. <clears throat> Just one for Bradley. Yes, you? please. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Is that this one? I stole a piece from the back. I got it from the back of your pipe. Okay. Well, on the first picture, what it shows and says is a post from Don Frazier that says, call Don if you'd like to rent a flea market table for $15 for the afternoon youth competition set up by noon. There's two issues that I find with this. One is that uh, uh, clearly some money was made from this, and two, it's using the city property without authorization to, to, you, to raise money, okay? So the boots, the second, the second one shows a picture that there's definitely a booth at this event. And there's another, there, there, excuse me, you know, I have a floor and it's not your turn to talk. It's never my turn to And please remember that. Anyway, um, it does just depict that there's several booths there. And the final page shows that there, uh, there was money. Now, that's only a $20 bill, but there was money. So, I submit that this was a fundraiser for Agora, which you said does not happen. Well, that's a great story, but it's not anything like the truth that I look back at the book since you made that libelous accusation on Wednesday, yeah. and it is, um, and we lost, we, we spent about $250 on the event, uh, on prizes. This is not a picture of flea market table. If you were at the Tony Town Carnival, you saw the same table. I spent 100, about $100 for the table there. We set up the Agora table for events at every event we do, and this is prize money that came out of the Agora bank account for the winner of the competitions that we had there. And I know that it, you, you can try to spin a yarn to make it look like a fundraiser, but it certainly isn't. Well, I'm only putting the facts forward that, that actually was on Facebook. Well, it's a, I'm not sure it was proper use of city, pro city property. Do my peers think that Agora events are not proper 
uh, use of events. I didn't make any money on this. We lost, we spent about $250 on it. I mean, what, why is it, are we allowed to be ridiculed like that by city staff? This was a wonderful event. What we were trying to do was raise the, uh, the awareness of our skate park. We needed, I serve as the Rex and Parks coordinator and the pieces of wood that are put on the covering were failing and we needed to raise awareness that we needed to work on the skate park to renovate it at the time. There were discussions at that meeting about that, of Rex and Parks that month. And um, I did have permission to use the property and they requested a certificate of insurance just like they did for the nativity scene. And Agora spends hundreds of dollars a year to insure all of our events. That's $560 I think is our annual premium to provide a million dollars of insurance for events. The BM Expo was the type of difference between a normal councilman and a person like me that does all kind of things in order to raise awareness of problems with youth in the city. We don't have enough for our young people to do in the city. And I've been advocating for splash parks and BMX rodeos and all sorts of things like that since I've been elected. Well, yeah, I see there that this was an annual thing. That we've never had a second. That's two years well, ago. Well, if you, I, it's not a flattery. Uh, imitation is the severest form of flattery. I don't know whether you're aware of it, but uh, the, we've had a cycle, a cycle event. This was the beginning of a great thing for Tony Town, and that is that the town has picked up the cycle event. We just had that a few weeks What's ago. What cycle event? We have a cycle event at the Memorial Park. Okay. Oh. Moving on, do you have anything else? I don't have anything else. I submitted what I, you know, what I found. <clears throat> well, it's okay. libelous to me, Madam Well, we've Chairman, had, that's enough that this on this. This is a fundraiser's event. When it's not a fundraiser event, we spent about $250 on it. And the record, the record needs to be corrected. When, when, when Next, does anybody died. have any questions on the departmental report? No, ma'am. Legal report. No, oh, I have a... Uh, on the promise that I told you at Wednesday's meeting, I prepared a legal opinion regarding the nativity scene and the constitutional issues and the conflict of interest issues. Uh, so I prepared that, and as I said, I have given that to the city manager so that he can decide with you all how it's going to be distributed because you've heard Councilman Frazier indicate that anything that he has given, he considers public. And so uh, it is now completed, and you all can figure out how do you want to distribute it and consume it for its review. I'm in possession and maybe some little bit of direction. Well, I'd like to speak to this idea that legal opinions don't, can't be presented to the city council for review. I think that's appalling. The city uh, attorney works for the city council and uh, to produce a legal opinion and not share it with the council. Well, I don't think he's saying he doesn't want to share it. Oh, uh, he's willing he to said. share it with the council, but the council cannot be sharing it outside of the council. And unfortunately, you made clear that you would share it outside of the council, which you've done in the past. I did no such thing. Well, if I, I did, did. you said that on Wednesday. I did not. You said I the public has a right Wednesday, to know. To review the video was whether or not the city manager needs to produce a report. Here's the city manager's report right here. Nothing, 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 nothing. Every meeting, nothing, nothing, okay. nothing. Councilman, you... you you're not understanding. I certainly, and I'm understanding there's nothing in my folder under the city, under the legal report, nothing, nothing, nothing. Every other department head gives me a report, but it's very disrespectful for the city attorney not to give us any report and then to say on Wednesday that you're not going to distribute legal opinions, which is his job to produce them. We're not at that point. In the, for that. We're not at that point in the agenda yet that the city attorney is going to give us. You know, is going to talk to us with his departmental report number one. We and number are. two, excuse me, councilman. Councilman, excuse me. I have the floor. You said at Wednesday night's meeting that anything that is produced or done in this building will be made public. I believe it belongs to the public. That's well, all and I said. You said it again. That's the point we're making. So if that, that be the two case, times you said it. If that be the case, then I would suggest that Councilman Frazier can go to Henry's office and read the report and not have a hard copy in his, in his hands to share with everyone else. If he's unable to keep it to himself, 
then that would be my suggestion. Well, you can FOIA things that are done at government expense, and we'll just have to do that if you're not going to provide it to all council members equally. We'll just have to FOIA it if the, everything done in this building is so secret that you cannot, the public can't see it, we just have to do use a Freedom of Information Act request for the PIA to get a copy of it. That is not subject to freedom of information. I, you can make the request all you want, but legal documents of attorney-client privilege aren't going to be disclosed. Well, I'm a city councilman, and for you to keep that from me, yeah, but well, you're not, not appropriate. You know, I He's can, not going to keep it from you. I have given it to the city, which is my client, and you have on two occasions in the past handed out legal opinions. <clears throat> Once you were censored for that, and the first time you did it was December 29th. To make the work of the city. Public. Councilman, would you let the city attorney finish, please? On December 29th, on 2015. You don't know, libel me at this meeting saying this is a fundraiser, and then you say that what I said on Wednesday is not true. The work of the city attorney, he's an employee of the city council, and he's supposed to have a report for us, and he's supposed to, he's supposed to give that report to all city councilmen. And he does, at the meeting. Right. Yeah. Right. And he's not an employee. That's not what's happening now, Ms. Fuller. It's exactly what's happening, happening now. now. The report was given to the city manager. He just said and then you that said his opinion that I could come to the city office and I could read it, but I couldn't have a hard copy. Didn't you just say that? <sighs> do you ever actually listen to what he's saying, or do you just tune him out as soon as he starts talking? No, just, just tell us whether that's what you just <clears throat> said a moment ago. No, that's not what I said a moment ago. What did you he say? He offered a ago? that he had an opinion that he wrote about the nativity situation. That was for our eyes only. Very That's controversial. The thing. And you've made it clear that you can't keep that information to yourself. So we're allowing you to go and read it, absorb it, whatever, and then leave. That's all. And then he'll continue on with his report. And my peers, will they get a copy of this opinion? I guess if they'd like to have it, sure, because none of them have proven that they can't Well, be I don't think trusted. you can discriminate against me as a city councilman in that manner. Well, unfortunately, I don't, I don't think you <clears throat> can distribute these things on your own, yet you do. But you do it. So you pick and choose which rules apply to you and which apply to us. The city attorney, I don't know why you're deaf. The city Madam. attorney belongs, it I works for, for the council. Minute. And the work that he does is paid for by the citizens of Tawny Town. And this is him doing his job. And they have and a right to know what he does for all the money he makes. And the council has a right to get a legal opinion without adversaries receiving it. That's not true. That is exactly true. In, government. in the same way that your lawyer, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, can I have the floor for a moment? Yes, please. I'd like it for, for, for a couple of moments. All right, so, so I guess the way that I think about this is, is you go back to the constitutional conventions, right? This will take a second, but it makes its point very clear, I think, right? You go back to the constitutional conventions. At, at its conclusion, you have Ben Franklin walking down the street and either apocryphal, apocryphally or historically, we don't quite know, a woman comes up to him and says, you know, Dr. Franklin, what did you give us? And Franklin responds, a republic if you can keep it. And, you know, the emphasis has always been on, you know, the republic if you can keep it, meaning that, you know, we as elected officials and as citizens need to ensure the survival of the republic. However, what people fail, or not fail to, but don't always consider is the woman, and specifically what she so intelligently asked Dr. Franklin was, you know, what have you given us? She's not saying, what did we vote to get? It's like, what did you, our elected representatives, give us? All right? When you go and look at the Constitutional Convention, right, the public was not invited to this. As a matter of fact, in the stifling heat of the summer, they shut the shutters so that the public could not overhear it. Right? And as you know, the uh, recording secretary took minimal notes, primarily only the votes that were taken, and these were not made public until after the fact. And when questioned about why this was kept secret for so long, up until the end of the convention, the delegates to the convention explained that the reason this was being done was because the information was of such a sensitive nature and was so important and so necessary, right, to, to allowing free discussion and them to freely entertain, to entertain ideas in their pursuit of the constitutional republic that they gave us, right? So in a situation like this, we're dealing with very sensitive information that we're using to craft the policy. The purpose here is we're not, try we're, we're not doing this for political propaganda, right? This whole, holiday display this whole holiday display policy is because we want sound policy and we need the legal opinion to inform that. 
It's sensitive information. Deny it from you? Are you okay with that? That you can't see it? You can come and read it, but you can't have a copy of it. Is that okay with you? I have no problem it? coming down to City Hall to read something. No, would that be okay with you? I just said but I have no problem. You denied the right to see the work of the city attorney that works with you. Oh, no one's, no one's denying, denying right. you that right. That's what Ms. Fuller just said. No, it's not. It's not. But I can't have a copy of it. No, that's incorrect. Didn't you say that? I said go and read it here in the office. You can see all of it. I just don't think it's a good idea to give you a hard copy because you tend to take pictures of everything and post it on Facebook. I do. I think and propagandize it. Three times. <laughs> Councilman, we're, we really are, we're trying to pursue a sound policy that enables holiday displays. We're not in this for political propaganda. We're not in this for posturing. We're trying to craft sound policy for the city. We've got a clue on Wednesday, if I might add, Madam Chairman, that um, the case that was being discussed openly in the Wednesday meeting had to do with Ike Leggett's attorneys trying to take down World War I monuments that had crosses on them because somehow Christians crosses for World War I veterans is, of, is offensive to Montgomery County government. That's the same government that took down the, uh, the statue of Justice Tawney, Chief Justice Tawney, put it in a cardboard, put it in a plywood box for two years. And I'm concerned that the city attorney gets paid this much money in order to write opinions and go to Annapolis and lobby for bills like article, like, like number 94 about putting cell phone towers, and we got to pay the bill. Okay. I don't uh, want the city attorney. We've heard doing from everybody that except Councilman Wentz. Uh, would you like to make a comment so that we can give the city manager direction? Treat all councilmen equally. Why? Well, let's discuss that. I think that's a great idea. As a councilman, you have responsibilities that I feel you don't understand or you oh, refuse to. That. I appreciate that you do not speak while I am. You're wrong. That's about another that. I don't understand. responsibility. That's what the mayor says all the time. You don't understand what's happening at the council. That's not true. Councilman <laughs> Frazier, you don't Councilman have to Lance that has the floor. Like <laughs> you have proven without denying that you are willing to share everything the city attorney gives to us. Really. This information that you censured me for was public information. False. He made it public because he discussed it in an open meeting. That's false. Now, when, you, when he makes something public at an open meeting, it becomes public. And he might stamp everything with attorney-client privilege, but when he discusses it openly at a meeting, it becomes public. Now, we've already discussed that, and you were in clear violation. And the fact that you haven't truly been held responsible for those violations is actually pretty sad. No, I think And it's a slap in the face of the residents of the city. But quite frankly, since you can't be trusted, and you acknowledge that you can't be trusted, you should not receive a hard copy of this. We we'll just have to FOIA it, like I said to Ms. Fuller. And you will not receive you it. You won't get it. You cannot receive it through a FOIA. What's well, called a PIA, I think, in Maryland, so. I think it's really controversial to pay this much money for legal advice and have him come in and say that nativity scenes that are displayed on government property all around America at Christmas time somehow are wrong because of something some Washington, D.C. suburbs case said. I don't want to pay him to do that kind of lobbying. I know you don't. That's because you already had your conflict of interest on this. But what's it's not a conflict of interest for me to spend wrong. $250 to try to, have, to increase the... Uh, the increase Councilman, of, if you if you remember, I'm, I'm still going to I'm still on the floor here, so I'm going to keep talking. If you remember, I voted against this to begin with. I know, and I explained I, why. I was happy to see you vote against it. I'm sure. I, <laughs> <laughs> and the reason is it protects the city, because as much as you're willing to sue for us not doing it, there are people willing to sue for us doing it. And he's giving us a legal opinion of why we can say no. And we can say no, and we should have said no. Santa Claus, too? Ma'am. Please. No comments, please. The issue here is just simply why you would treat me differently than other council members. Because you've proved that you can't act like a council member like the rest do. Well, some think that. But some people I talk to are pretty happy about the fact that I have an ardent uh, 
That your goal is to be the Edward Snowden of Tawny Town? To be, uh, to be, uh, to use ardent uh, persistence in digging through the details of government to get better government. That's what I'm. And saying. there are other people in the city who think you're a fool for violating all of these rules. I can't live by what people think. Well, of there's me. a difference between being. Well, true then and maybe you shouldn't run decision. for office if you don't care what people think, because you have to answer to them, not the other way around. What is, where are we on the agenda? That's ridiculous. Where are we on the okay, agenda? Okay, um, we've heard from everybody. I, I have a, a bit of a suggestion as well. You know, I've been contemplating what was said. And, you know, I'm not sure just taking it and sharing the document in, in here is a good idea. What I believe would be best is probably to read it. And the attorney and I, I agree with that. that. To read it. Okay. Anybody comes in the office. No, he can't see it. I'll read, I'll read it to him. <laughs> I don't think that's, I, I think he can read it. <laughs> I'm going to ask you one more time. Well, the reason I say that is I have, my concern is, is that, uh, excuse me, I really believe I'm talking now. That's like three. It was two for me and one for her. Three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Doing? Now, my concern is that uh, even though we may give them the document to look at while it's there, it doesn't make them you know, take a program or something. Why not? Oh. The trust level is very low. Well, understandably so. The thing that, is, Madam Chairman, if we might conclude on this matter, move on to the agenda, the night rains on, uh, is that we just wanted to uh, make it clear that the city attorney works for the council. And I want to make it clear that the work he does sh should be given to all councilmen. That's okay. all I want to say. Thank you. And if you can move on, that would okay, be fine. Okay, um, so. I mean, to have a protracted. What? direction do we want to give the city manager with this we want uh i think i'm hearing that uh, councilman frazier will not be given a hard copy of this document number one number two he can come into the city office and the city manager would rather have it read to him i think he should be permitted to view it madam okay he thinks he should be permitted to hold the piece of paper and read it. I can consent to that. that. Is that what you mean by view it? That's correct, yes. Okay. Uh, I Councilman will, Vigliotti? I think that's okay, and I'll go out of my way to come in to read it as well, so there's no exclusion here. Council well, I call the question on the new policy to exclude that, Madam Chairman. Um, I would, I would concede and agree to have that happen. Um, and give him trust that he can not take pictures of it with his cell phone. I can distribute that document to Ford tonight. People so desire. <clears throat> Could read it before we leave tonight. No, no he means. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. Okay. All right. All right, that will be fine. Okay, Councilman Frazier, you will make arrangements to come into the office. Perhaps I will. Review the document. It's down for a purpose. Back glasses. Thank you. <laughs> Next on the agenda is old business. Uh, do we Anybody have any old business? Legal report. Do we have any? The we still have oh, I'm sorry. No, I, right. I have no more unless you all have questions for me. I, I have a question, if, if I can. And I wasn't sure whether I should bring this up under legal because I'm sure it deals with legal uh, or under you know, departmental and city manager. But uh, as everybody knows, we've had a couple of fires over the last you know, couple of years. and. And you know, in many of these instances, it's due to human error, but there is some genuine concern among <coughs> residents of the town. Um, you know, 
about having so many fires over the course of the last couple years. And I guess I'm, I guess what I'd like to request is a review of any fire safety policies, regulations, anything that we have. Um, I also know that you know county and state regulations and, and policies also affect us. And I guess by asking for this review of, of fire safety protocol, for lack of a better term, um, I just want to make sure that that you know we're being proficient, we're doing our due diligence, so to speak, and that you know there's no rooms for improvement. And if there are, if we can go ahead and, and make that improvement. Yeah, I think um, I saw some comments on social media about things like that, and I guess that's a reasonable thing to do. Um, I'm not sure that it falls directly in legal. What I can I would suggest off the top of my head is that um, the city staff, primarily uh, the code enforcement officer, give you a a summary of the codes that apply to fire safety. I mean, I could do it, but he could do it as well. There also may be some insight in the fact that you realize that the fire department for the town is under the city charter too, that maybe there is some contact with them so that they could give you some type of a report about like what the fires, I mean, they're fires, but how did they start? Like there's, if somebody knock over a candle or was there an electrical fire? Right. That may be the difference between, hey, we should look at the electrical code or that type of thing. And I would think that they could probably come up with a report of relevant things in the past year or two to let you know whether or not uh, you can do anything, meaning any steps you take would be meaningful. So I think that would be reasonable to do, and I would imagine the city staff could do that, and I could look at it. I think that's <clears throat> up to the city manager, I think, but I think that's reasonable. Anybody have any objections or... Now, I know for the most part, the city uh, defers to the county, which then defers to the state fire code, um, which is actually not far removed from federal fire code. Um, even when someone comes in with site plan information, the city doesn't review it for fire code issues. It actually goes through with the county at that point. Uh, the fire department also has a say on most of them as well, but the county really handles most of that stuff. What it comes down to is whether property owners slash landlords are being diligent to make sure that their properties are up to code. Um, and that's the problem with fire code is no one's going to come into your house. Like recently, just this year, we had a change in smoke detector law in the state of Maryland. A lot of people don't realize that, but no one's going to come to your house and make sure you have the right smoke detector. But if there's an incident and the fire department is in there and they see it, they're going to bring it up and, and it could, you know, uh, could come back to you on that. Um, that's what's kind of odd about fire code is that there's no one that goes house to house saying, I'm here to check when your you know, fire suppression or your fire right. uh, smoke detectors, things like that. It's a very difficult thing as opposed to other ones because, A, you have to enter their premises and there's really no legal way for them to do that unless you invite them in. There's a whole litany of reasons. But for the most part, to make sure that, at least from the exterior, what uh, our code, enfor and code enforcement officer can observe may benefit the citizens as well. Oh, yeah, it's like a checkup on everything that we do. Well, I object to it. I think it adds insult to injury to hear <laughs> that at the Monday council meeting, after somebody's the victim of a fire, that we're going to go back and look at fire codes and look through what this and I just think the discussion of it, it gives us a bad name I believe I have a lot of um, confidence in our fire company I don't have any reason to believe that the recent fires were not handled well by the fire company oh it's not a question of that at all not enforced and I think that we should table any movement uh, directives to the staff to add insult injury by pouring over these victims troubles and I would like to ask the council not to go forward with Joe's, uh, Mr. Councilman Bigliotti's proposal to do a review at this time. It's just so insulting after you have somebody take such a loss. Councilman Frazier, can you explain to me your understanding of what Councilman Bigliotti is asking for? I heard every word he said that he wants to initiate with the help of staff review of uh, protocols i don't think this no, is the time no to do no that. no there's no protocols involved this is fire code this is for fire safety within the city is that word protocols not a word you don't understand i use that for it's lack a of a word better term that was not used it's we're not sitting here telling the fire department how to do their job if it were up to us we wouldn't want the fire department to have to do anything we'd rather there not be fires in the city i don't understand why you we're trying to find ways to use of that word I, I don't you latched onto a word that 
may not have been the correct use, but you're taking it out of context. This is not victim shaming. This is not saying the fire department didn't do a great job. We all know that they did. What we're trying to do is make sure that we can make sure the houses in the city are safe when there is a fire. That people can get out, that people are alerted to it. This is, has nothing to do with controlling a fire department or anything like I that. I think it's unwise at this time to initiate the idea that Council Migliotti brought up to initiate, to review those, what word do you want to use, procedures? No, he was talking about fire code. Co fire code procedures. Right. So you think so the, you're public, opposed. the public who is requesting that we look into this is wrong and we should not do what the public wants in terms of fire safety? I think you are safety. the public. I think I have I, not heard any requests from the public to do such a thing. I, I, I'm trying to understand why you're against taking it's action I, to ensure safety for residents. I think we should be re resolute to follow the codes. And I believe the people in charge of those things are doing so. But I do not think it's good timing after we have victims being injured like this to hear that the city council is, is pursuing a crackdown on procedures. No, no, no. again. Your comprehension of this I is I just want to go on record lacking. as opposed to what was just suggested. To, to oppose public safety. No, to oppose Councilman Vigliotti's procedure that on this date, in January, we begin an investigation of these protocols. I don't think it's good timing to do that. I think it's insult to injury, and I don't think it's good timing to do that. So would be the good time would be the next time somebody else and maybe loses a life, that would be better to wait till then? I think if an individual councilman wants to review these things on their own time, that would be fine. He's and simply, if there is any issue they come up with, they can come up, bring them up for discussion. Well, that's what but he's I asking not, to do, is right. to have yeah. these things brought up for discussion. He, but well, he if he has any substantive things to bring to up know. about failures of these Procedures, I, those could be, I, at a future meeting, I would be okay with discussing those. I'm just not okay with authorizing the staff like you, to do you their job to go forward and review these things. I have no reason to believe the staff has not done a diligent job. Okay. Uh, wow. If, if I just make a moment. We did have a, a very... Um, it was a huge fire we had here just recently, two days ago. Yes, indeed. And what I'd like to do is recognize the efforts that went into that. There was fire companies that came from Me too. all over. I'm sorry? Me too. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. In any event, you know, the, the behind-the-scenes things that, that aren't really noticed is what the city does on, on such an events. On that particular event, I was in communication with both the mayor, the chief of police, and public works. The mayor was on scene, and he was um, aiding the people that were uh, involved in this, the, the, the loss, pointing them in directions to get where to get housing. So he's, he was right there for four hours. Now, other things that's not seen is that the, the police, we brought in extra police, we called them in to do traffic control. Beyond that, we also brought in public works people to make sure that there was sufficient flow to the hydrants. So, um, Which could be a problem in this cold weather. Right. It, well, it, it, it was really was. <laughs> so I, I just you know, want to make note that uh, what we what we did on this event and um i think that all should be commended for the efforts that they were done i agree and, and i i do think that you know uh the loss of the homes for these families has been significant and it and it really looks as though the community is responding with clothing and all the other things that they need so it's it's a very although it was a tragedy it also brought the community together and i think that uh you know, it was wor worthwhile just to note that we did what we did and what th that they did. Thank you. Okay, we are up to new business. Is there any new business? Okay, uh, monthly financial report. 
I move that we approve the monthly financial report, madam. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry, discussion? The monthly financial reports are, re are approved. Accounts payable. Somebody like to mo make a motion to approve the accounts payable. Wait, did we? We didn't vote on the. Yeah. I don't I believe. We did. Okay. I don't think the vote was clear, madam. Can okay. We, okay. Let's go back. Thank Council. you. All in favor of approving the monthly financial report, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Accounts payable. I'll so make that motion. motion. Okay. I'll, I'll second. Discussion? Yes, I have a question about the payables. On page four of the accounts payables, there is a, a check number 22554 for, uh, for $4,768.75. And the check also includes a, a second one called September for $3,931.25. I don't know that my colleagues on the council recall my objection to spending over $20,000 on advice in June and July. But I object to spending this kind of money for legal advice. Like, for example, tonight, there's no report in my book from the legal report. And the only thing we heard was that I wasn't allowed to see a document that belongs to the people of Tawny Town. But anyway, all that being said, I oppose the spending of over $8,000 on legal advice in October and uh, September. I don't think we ought to pay that bill. I think that's highly irregular to charge that much money to attend the planning commissions in this meeting and not say a thing. And I'm going to vote against the council. So Councilman noted. Frazier, do I move that we strike this check from the register and not pay this bill? Councilman Fraser, a, a, a this amendment is a, to the motion. This is a check register. Yes. I, what I, that means is the check has already been printed. That's just the report. So the payment's already been made. Notwithstanding, I make a motion that we strike this payment to this person, check 22554 from the register. It's irregular. So noted. Any highly irregular to spend that kind of money for legal advice. Most of the people here are familiar with the codes. They do not need legal advice on what goes on here, and to bill $150 an hour for that is appalling. Madam Chair. Money. 25. Madam Chair. May yes. I? All right. Uh, let me state here that, that, you know, the work that Jay does for us, when he does give us his legal opinions, he delivered a very lengthy legal opinion to us on Wednesday night. He noted tonight that there was nothing new to add. And the questions that we had for him tonight, specifically around attorney-client privilege and also around fire policy, as you will, right, he was here to answer. If he wasn't here, who was going to answer that question? We'd be done by now. But who would answer the question, Councilman? Right. Second of all, and second of all, second of all, we want to remind everybody watching and the council at large that the rate that he charges us is the cheapest in the county. He does it as a favor to us because he loves this town. He loves us. Would you rather have an attorney who's charging two, three, four hundred dollars an hour? I don't think attorneys need to attend the planning and zoning meetings and this, these meetings on most events, except if we have an issue that needs legal advice. I think it's very expensive to, the, the, I'd like to know the total of attorney payments for the year 2017. They're exorbitant. Councilman Frazier, we have this discussion 10 of 12 months a year. <laughs> The same thing. Your comments are so noted. I'm going to call for the vote to well, approve the account. Well, payable. I made a motion to strike this, and you'll have to get a lack of second for that. Okay, would anyone like to second Councilman Frazier's motion? So the motion dies for lack Whatever of second. Now the vote on the question, if Ms. Madam Chairman, with all due consideration. All in favor of approving the accounts payable. Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm opposed to that. Okay, next is council member reports. Councilwoman Fuller, we'll start with you. Start on my side. Crazy. <laughs> um, yes. So, and, and I don't want to go back to the fire. Um, social media in our town is a fantastic way for people to get information out to the public. But I've noticed lately that it's not being used in a very positive way. 
and there's been a lot of misinformation and some negativity directed both towards the town itself and to other citizens, etc. cetera. Um, I find it very strange that some people in particular wanted to know why we weren't on Facebook shouting out to the people who had the house fire, which is kind of ridiculous to me because if something that horrendous had happened to me, the last place I would go is Facebook to see how many people are feeling sorry for me. So I would consider if you're posting on Facebook that there was the, the three gates of speech that they had. It's, is it true, is it necessary, and is it kind? That maybe people start considering those three things when they're posting things on Facebook and actually know, is it true first? Because there were some very hurtful and hateful things said both about the owner of that property and the people renting and the fire department, and I just find it disturbing because it is such an already horrendous thing that they would make it that much worse. So I will just leave it at that and just say that I appreciate you know, our guys out there that are working so hard through all this ice and snow and salting these roads, and they've been doing a wonderful job. Agreed. And they actually came and saved me one day when I had a dead battery. So I appreciate them <laughs> to the umpteenth degree. And that's all I have. Thank you. Councilman Vigliotti. Uh, just a few very brief things. First of all, I want to associate myself with everybody who's thanked the fire department and the other emergency responders who showed up on Sunday. Uh, what was a very bad and tragic situation would have been worse without them, so I want to thank them for that. I was reminded earlier today that it is Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. So, Brian, we want to say thank you for all of the good work you do, and please convey our thanks to the chief and the rest of the department. And on that note, I have a very brief uh, uh, message from the chief. Uh, he wanted to give us an update on the police department. As everybody knows, we have two outgoing officers, and we have found two replacements for them. Uh, and the chief wanted me to note that the first new hire comes to us with eight years of experience and brings with him certifications that will immediately provide the department with training opportunities. These include firearm instruction, patrol rifle instruction, and general instruction, and the department is very excited about having him. Uh, the second officer is currently finishing background, comes to the city with three years of experience, and the department is very excited about having him join the team as well. Uh, the chief wanted me to note, note specifically that the transition between the two officers who are leaving and the two who are incoming is going to be smooth and effortless, and there's going to be no downtime between them. Uh, the chief also very specifically finally wanted me to say, um, and I'll read this verbatim so I know I have his words correct, uh, that anytime you have some adversity in your life or a job, you have to meet it head on. But it truly helps to have a great team behind you, and we have that here. Uh, the chief is talking about the realignment that we did several months ago. Being competitive is the new norm, and I want to thank the mayor and council for the support you all gave us when the adversity hit. It shows everyone inside the city and out that we have a strong team. I'm very glad to be a part of this team, and thank you. And so I think the council really should you know, commend themselves for the situation we were faced with back in the spring that we acted immediately to fix. And because of that, we have this effortless transition, and we have all of these new officers who are bringing amazing skills to, to the department, to this town. And the chief, again, wanted me to very specifically say thank you to everybody for, for having his back, for having the department and the town's back in that instance. And that's all for me tonight. Thank you. Councilman West. Um, I have nothing to report from planning and zoning. We did not have a meeting uh, in December. Um, but going back to social media and then where it comes out into real world, uh, there's a great little program out on King's Drive the Little Free Pantry, and along with that is the Little Free Library. Um, there's small houses on posts in front of the house that people can go if they need food items. It's stocked not just by the person in the home, but people on Facebook, when they see it getting low, they all show up and they fill it. And there was a great picture last week where someone posted that it was getting low, and a few hours later, there was so much food they couldn't close the doors, it was on the ground next to it, it was an amazing outpouring of support. Mm -hmm. And then the Little Free Library is a great thing for children, they, you know, parents stop by, pick out a book for their kid, read it, take it back, let someone else enjoy it. And over the holidays, they had some great Christmas books in there as well. 
Um, so it's that sort of thing that I think really helps the community. It's nice to see how social media you know, can outplay into the real world as well. Um, so that's something that's great to see, and it, it brings a lot of people together. And I'd like to say that I think along with everybody, my, my thoughts and prayers are with the family that were affected by the fire. And I think we're fortunate that that does not happen a lot in the city, considering the size of the city. Um, but again, I commend everyone involved with the great job that was done in handling that. So, thank you, Madam. Councilman Frazier. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Today I had the chance to attend the uh, memorial service for James uh, Ellsworth Reader, and this is a program that was given out at Pritt's funeral home for this distinguished Carroll Countyan uh, who served with the American Legion and the VFW as the comptroller with the public school system for all of Carroll County, including Tawny Town, and in many other uh, capacities throughout his life, a person who lived a good life of giving to the community, this community and other communities uh, with his life, departed this life just this past weekend. My wife and I had the chance to visit him at Levinson Nursing Home on New Year's Day and <clears throat> great hopes for his recovery, but the Lord would have it to work out differently. And today he's walking streets of gold. I would like to uh, suggest that the council because the entire Carroll County delegation presented a large certificate commending him for his civic work for all regions of the county, including this town, because I know of many things he's done here for this town, uh, adopt a resolution of memoriam like the delegation did uh, for Lou Jordan just last week that was ably presented at the Union Bridge Fire Hall on Saturday that I was able to attend. So I'd make a motion that we draft a letter of memoriam to the family, Nancy Stocksdale's brother, this is Nancy Stocksdale, who represented our town for three sessions in the legislature, and send it to the family on behalf of Tony Town and expressing our sympathies at the passing of Jim Reeder. I'd make that in the form of a motion. I'll second that, and if I could very briefly also say to you and to Mrs. Frazier, I want to offer my prayers and condolences on the passing of your father. It's very hard to lose someone that you love, especially somebody that close, and I'm very sorry that happened. All in favor of Councilman? He seconded. He seconded. Uh, yeah. Councilman did, yes. All in favor of uh, Councilman Frazier's motion to issue a proclamation, I suppose. I sounded like a letter. A letter? Letter. Of memoriam. Of That's memoriam. Right. Much like that. Carroll County delegation did a wonderful job today, all the members. Okay. We can okay. also an elected official, yes. For. Um, for James Reeder. Mr. Reeder. I say aye to that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, uh, fellow members. Appreciate okay. that. Is that it? Thank you. I make a motion that we finished our business for tonight, that we adjourn for the evening. There's well, a second. What about? We still have to hear from the Mayor Pro Tem. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have a comment tonight? Yes. Okay. Um, a few of us attended the service on Saturday for uh, Lou Jordan. It was a very nice service. And uh, people came from as far away as, I believe, England? London. Yeah, yes. London. <laughs> Big crowd. And I could still pick out people that I thought would have been there that weren't there for whatever reason even with the crowd that was there. Uh, Councilman Frazier attended, uh, city manager, the mayor, and myself. And the mayor did read the proclamation. Okay. So it was well received by the family, and the family was very grateful. And the state of the county, I'm trying to think, was that this morning or is that tomorrow? No, it's morning. It was, it was this, this morning. morning. Okay, yes. got my days mixed up. I did not get to attend that because I had a conflict. And that's it. So I will again move if that's all right. I'm sorry to be too hasty in that. Okay. For adjournment if that's all right with my there fellows. There's second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.